Well, obviously they get the, the, the fire drill and where my children went to school in, um, in Los Angeles, um, it was quite common to have earthquake drills. Mm. But what was quite scary, Alistair came home from school one day and I didn't get a letter about this, which was a bit unnerving, but I guess it's the norm. There was a drill for intruder. And I said, what do you mean intruder? And he said, well, they said it would cover an, a wild animal or a gunman. A and man how old was loose he? How old was he, then? he was only eight, eight. Wow. seven or eight. Um, yeah, a, a man loose on campus with a firearm. I mean, uh, to begin with, I was just thought, I don't want my child being exposed to those type of horrors. But then when you think about it, if they're out there, like, like it is in America, and obviously terrorism the way it is right now, I think children do need to be prepared. And basically, they were asked to sort of not get under the desk, but get against the window, underneath the window, against the wall, so should the gunman walk by, look in the classroom, they, wouldn't, they would think the children weren't in. So frightening, but I think if my child was at school, like a girlfriend of mine, her, her, her kids were at school and there was a gunman and the school was on lockdown, and you know the children are safe because they have the drills. Should a gunman be on the campus who will be looking in the classrooms through the windows to see if there's any children and move on to the next classroom trying to hunt down children? So they were asked to hide underneath the windows, as I say, against the wall, so not under the chairs, but I guess, you know, maybe if there was a big store cupboard or something like that, mm. but it, it needs to be addressed. The same with child abuse, mm. anything that's going to affect our children I when they're not in our hands. You, it's how you do it, Lisa, isn't it? Yeah, how you absolutely. explain it to them. And it's how you say to a child, you know, it, it is on the news and they, you know, they do see like the news at six o'clock mm. when they come back from class and stuff, but obviously I don't have children, but for me, I think it's very important in the workplace. And for me personally, I was involved in the Manchester IRA bomb, um, which sticks very yeah. you know, strongly. And how old would you be? I was in my teens. Right. Yeah, and I was uh, going to work, as you do every day. I was working at the Disney shop, and it's right in the centre of Manchester, going about my own, you know, daily routine, and got there, and all of a sudden, it was like evacuation, you know. Now, I can say I was involved with pandemonium, right? Mm. And my, uh, my thing was, there was absolutely no leadership. We mm. didn't have the drill. We didn't have someone going, OK, right, go there. It was just this mass cacophony of sound. And had there been an explosion at that point? No, not this point. Right. We, so were, we were, like, we were going so out. Had a phone call to say yeah, there was a bomb. We got there. the warning, but then what happened? Due to the pandemonium, they then, with the police, pushed us in the wrong direction. Then it hit again, and and that was just insane. You know, there was people bleeding everywhere. You know, and I was a teenager, and it, it did affect me a lot. Mm. That still now in my life, you know, um, the Trafford Centre was built in Manchester, and everyone was like, "Oh, fantastic, fantastic!" It wasn't like that for me, and I didn't want to go. Uh, I didn't want to be in this massive, massive mm. place because in my head it was like, of course, it's obvious that would be an easy target. Mm. And of course, are those shops having drills? You know, like when you'd go on a yeah. cruise liner sure. you, you, mm. for a two-week holiday, you have to have that drill. So did it make you, does it make you think about security all the time, whether all you're flying or on a train or yeah. a shopping centre? Yeah, not long ago, I went to see Kylie Minogue at the Manchester Arena for a concert with all my friends, you know, all excited. And I'm literally going, I'm like that, looking around, thinking, this is going to could be an obvious target, you know, and I, I go into situations thinking, and especially it's Manchester, my hometown, and where the arena is, it's so close to where the uh, the attack was. So, yeah, I think it is something we need to put out there. You know, of course, as you know, as parents, it's, it's the mm. wording, how you do it with kids, mm -hmm. you know, with all age factors. Appropriate age appropriate. Age yeah. appropriate, yeah. I mean, you've been psychologically affected by that, yeah. obviously, as well. Did you get any physical injuries? Yeah, I've still got literally a scar there now. That's my little white dot there from the bit of phone box. Wow. And um, I remember it distinctly. You you know, because it actually didn't hit me the shock till a lot, lot later. Because what happened was, obviously, the hit happened. It was the sh initial shock, and then about a week later, it was still all over the news. Yeah. And to think that I was involved in that, yeah. and I packed my job in at the shop mm. straight away. I couldn't, I couldn't go back because it was that initial. Mm. I was, I was petrified. And also, you can't unsee some of the things you see yeah. in something so horrific like that, yeah. can you? It's no. there. Do you and have the attitude though that you feel that? You're not going to let allow that to stop you, and you're still going to go yeah. to the theatre, you know, to see a show, to to go sort of, you know, be amongst the public. Or, yeah. or have you got such a fear that it's kept you away? I do have a claustrophobic fear, yeah, yeah. with things like that, especially like when I'm on planes now. Right. And um, 
For example, if I'm there, I'm, I'm the world's worst. If you were sat next to me and you had your magazine like that, right, it's there, it's literally two minutes yes. to listen to that. And it's yeah. so important. Every plane. Well, when they're giving the safety demonstration. The safety yes. So demonstration. many people don't listen. And I literally go, yeah. put your magazine down. And people are gnashing away. It drives me crackers. You know, it's like two minutes that in hindsight could save your life because, you know, you're going to need to know what happens should there be some yeah. form of I am nervous. that one. I literally, I'm, I'm nodding encouragement at them. Yeah, you should. You should. Reading, reading all the safety Yeah, no, I remember uh, reading about a study that they did years ago about... It, they looked at people who survived disasters. I mean, yeah. obviously, there are some disasters that nobody survives, but... Um, and the people that generally survive disasters are those that listen to safety drills, that know what to do and, to st and stay calm. And don't panic. Yeah, They're prepared, yeah. isn't it? Really. But 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 with you, Lisa. I mean, obviously you, you function in day to day yeah, life. But is yeah. it ever something that you thought you needed to get help with, or not get help with? But it's something that I am so aware of. Like, and I think, especially when it's on the news, I overwatch something, and then it's like I'm feeding that yeah. myself yeah. and I shouldn't yeah. but I, I do you know try now obviously go about my daily life you know perfectly all right but I still have yeah especially like, like Penny said theatres I always like to have the aisle seat all the time mm. and I go and see friends and they, they actually book it for me it's weird yeah. they'll get me the seat on the aisle because it's like that I can get yeah. out quick if you've enjoyed that then why not click here for more and don't forget to subscribe by clicking here so that you never miss out on the best loose women moments